Today we're making a multi-roll tape dispenser from scratch using acrylic, wood and a bandsaw blade. Boom! It's very rare for me to make prototypes, but this time I'm going to take advantage of my new laser machine and check if the dimensions and concept work before using nicer materials. I started by cutting a few pieces of plywood to fit in the bed of the Bimo laser machine that was sent to me by Flux. It comes with an amazing user manual with an extensive table of contents with answers to pretty much any question you might have while using the machine. This is a small 30 watt CO2 laser and so far I find it perfect to get started in the laser cutting and engraving world. I have no experience in this field and so far I'm enjoying it a lot. It has a camera that captures the work area using their software and allows you to see where the material is positioned. The software is called Beam Studio and it's pretty easy to use, it works on both Mac and PC. You just grab the camera icon and select the area you want to photograph and you instantly have your workpiece in the screen that allows you to position your design exactly where you want it to be cut or engraved. The next step is to focus the laser beam according to the material thickness and BMO comes with a small spacer that needs to fit vertically over the material surface and will give you the correct distance from the laser head to the workpiece. I can then import the SVG file that I previously drew on Illustrator and set up the laser power and speed to cut the 5mm plywood. You can find a list of the presets and I actually used the one designated to cut 5mm wood. This preset executes the job twice and I found that my plywood was already cut through on the first pass so I cancelled the job and then created my own preset to use in the future with the same plywood. It all depends on the density of the wood and I believe that cutting a hardwood would probably need that second pass, but in my case it wasn't necessary. When I was analyzing the first test I noticed that I forgot the holes on the outer face of the tape dispenser, but regarding the machine performance everything is looking sharp. The 8mm rod fits nicely in the slot and the middle holes of the smaller components also fit well in the rod. But this middle piece is a bit too loose, so I enlarge it slightly in the drawing before cutting a second batch. I did apply masking tape to the underside of the plywood, because sometimes you get little burning marks when the laser beam hits the metal in the honeycomb table, and I wanted to prevent that. I guess this is something that occurs to all lasers with honeycomb tables, and if you have any tips besides masking the workpiece to prevent those marks, let me know in the comments. To begin with the assembly I had to drill the forgotten holes and could then glue the sides, the small spacers and the core. This test was for a single tape roll and off camera I did cut two pieces of 15mm plywood for the front and back that I can now put together with washer head screws. Ok, it all seems to work fine, so I went ahead using the laser machine to cut a bunch of spacers and core pieces for the multi-roll tape dispenser. Burning material creates lots of bad fumes and smell and you can't just use a laser machine inside your workshop without it venting out or using a specific air filter. Flux also sent me this beam air filter that connects to the laser machine and pushes the fumes to then release clean air on the other side. I can't say it removes completely any burning smell in the room, but it does make a huge difference so I recommend you still keep one window open while lasering. I moved into cutting the acrylic for the tape dispenser sides. In the meantime I prepped the stock for the front and back faces. 
I cut one end of this African teak board on the bandsaw and resaw it to about 50 mm thick. I was getting a lot of tear out on the cross cuts even using masking tape because my table saw blade wasn't sharp enough. I will later fix that by chamfering the edges. To inset a blade in the front face of the tape dispenser, I decided to make a slot on the table saw. To make a secure cut, I put together the quickest jig, simply butt jointing two pieces of scrap plywood to work as a sled. I cut the final hardware piece and moved into cutting a section of a fine tooth band saw blade that I once purchased in the wrong size. This isn't the perfect option and neither is the hacksaw blade that I've seen some people and even myself use in the past. A store-bought tape dispenser replacement blade will always cut a lot better since the teeth are shaped specifically to cut tape, but these solutions can do the job. I tried to sharpen it, creating a bevel with the angle grinder, and it actually made a huge difference in the cut performance. The blade curve is a lot wider than the thickness of the bandsaw blade, so I made a shim to fit snug in the slot. I think the back piece will look a lot better if the top edge gets slightly angled, matching the side panels. I wanted to assemble everything before the final touches to make sure it works. I didn't have any round head screws, so I temporarily attached the tape dispenser with flat head screws. It seemed good, so I applied a coat of hard wax oil on the wood for a nicer and deeper color and started working on the front label just for fun. The different components were set to separate layers in the software in order to use different laser settings on a single job.
The masking tape keeps the surface of the wood clean and free from burning marks. I can now remove the masking tape from the masking tape label. I went to the hardware store the next day to get a handful of classic round head screws. I think it looks much nicer this way. I still need to make a razor for the tape to stick to and make it easier to cut. It must be a smooth and cold surface from what I tested, so I made it with aluminum. Any other metal should work well. Wood doesn't work as the tape doesn't stick too well to it. It basically needs to prevent the tape from being dragged forward as you apply force to cut it. To be able to operate it with a single hand, it needs to be quite heavy and stay still. The acrylic and wood weren't heavy enough, so I stuck four silicon bumpers to create an anti-slip action and it worked a lot better. Still, I think this tape dispenser came out super nice and the fine tooth band saw blade solution seems to work well. I was really impressed by how easy it is to create awesome 3D textures with a laser by burning the wood at different rates. Regular plastic tape cuts right off with no effort at all, but thicker and tougher tapes like this green one, for example, requires a higher force to be cut. I even tried to cut gaffer tape, but it is so strong that a second hand is needed to keep the tape dispenser in place. I hope you enjoyed this project and if you're interested in making a tape dispenser like this one, check out the template I have available in the description below. A big shout out to all my Patreon members for making this video possible and if you want to support my work too, head over to patreon.com slash gethandsdurry or visit my online shop and get one inspirational print, a t-shirt or woodworking plans. Thanks everyone for watching and go get your hands dirty. Até já.